Good morning, Cathedral. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I greet you in the most potent, precious, powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from Psalms 34. If you bear with me, if you bear with me, Psalms 34. It reads, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked upon him and were enlightened. And their face were not ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. The angels of the Lord camped around about them that fear him and delivered them. Here we go. Oh, taste and see. Say that again. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Bless you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, it's an honor to be here. Anybody glad to be in here one more time? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah.
uh, first give an honor to God, to Pastor Mac in his absence, and to you, my cathedral family and friends, good morning. good morning. This is a special time in our service that we welcome our visitors. If you're visiting with us today, please stand and remain standing while I have a few words. Any visitors? Matthew 22, 37 states, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. On behalf of Pastor Mac in his absence and the Cathedral Faith family, we welcome you. If you love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and you also just heard the choir saying, I will bless the Lord at all times because he's good. So if you love him and he's good to you, Today, you need to give him the praise. Yes. To train up a child in the way they should go. And I believe heaven is rejoicing because we have a young soul that's starting off the right way. Amen. <laughs> Would you please take out your bulletins at this time? Um, there are a few announcements like we like to highlight in your hearing activities that are taking place in the life of our church family. Um, the first one I want to highlight is the minister's group leaders meeting that was scheduled for today. It has been postponed uh, because our pastor, uh, some of you already know, he's on vacation and was not able to be here today. But we're just praying God's traveling grace that he will be here. Like Lepman said, normally when he comes back off vacation, it's like he's on fire. And he brings a word that is powerful. So we are praying for him right now while he's away. So that meeting will be canceled or postponed today. And there are other things we'd like for you to look at. One is the back to school drive, which is scheduled for August the 9th of this coming week. Uh, if you would like to contribute, the list has already been provided for you to know exactly what to pick up for the children. I asked Reb this morning, can I do like always and just give y'all the money? Because some people like me are lazy and don't want to go to the store. But he had to remind me that a lot of the volunteers have jobs. So they can't always go. So amen. So if you get an opportunity, you're in a store and you think about it, pick up something to bless one of the children. Amen. 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 Also, um, when you came in, we hope that the Urshers gave you one of these little cards here speaking about our wellness classes. We are restarting those classes uh, here this October uh, for our young children. Our pastor is very adamant about trying to reach them while they're young because if we can reach them now, we can help them from getting the gun. Let me say it again. Reach them while they're young so they won't reach for the gun. Amen. And so one of the, one of the blessings of this class, and Reverend, uh, Reverend Wilson shared this with us earlier, is that the children have to learn scripture. Amen. And they get points for the scriptures that they know. The challenge for them is they need help learning the scripture. So that means that the parents will have to help them to learn the scripture. And we had a story to where a parent was dropping the children off to come to Awana's and the child was coming home with the assignment and the parents were reading the scripture with the child. And not only was the child blessed, but the parent was changed. And instead of dropping the child, they started coming to learn more about the scriptures for themselves, amen? So this is a very powerful class that's coming up. Also, we want to make you mindful of August the 27th. Uh, I see a lot of y'all got your tied and below, so I'm getting to it. So just, just, just bear with me, amen. Like, I know y'all ready to give, so just give me a moment, amen. Amen. No, you got to do, you can't got to do that. Stop that. Amen. Anyway, I'm talking about the tied and below. Some people trying to let me know it's offering time. Amen. But anyway, we have the Friends and Family Day picnic coming up, our fellowship on August the 27th. Amen. That is the fourth Sunday of this month to where we will come together for one service. And it will be at 10 a.m. Amen. Let me say it again. We will come together for one service. If you normally come at 8, you'll just be here early enough for the 10 o'clock service. Amen. Amen. So on that day, we ask that you would come dressed comfortably because immediately following the services, we will immediately go over, I think it's a, a transition of about 30 minutes or something like that, and then we'll go over for the family and friends picnic day. 
If some of you want to bring something to change into because you're not comfortable coming casual, that's fine too. And for those of you who are coming casual, respectably casual, amen, because we want to see you as pastors, say, but we don't want to see all of you, amen. So, amen, okay, so just remember that on August the 27th. Also, we have um, a, a church cruise that's coming up for the month of December. The marriage ministry is sponsoring a, uh, was part of a cruise to the Bahamas, or no, to Jamaica. And they have some information related to that. It's still not too late for you to sign up if you want to go with the church in December the 7th. I think it's December the 7th. Uh, it'll be leaving to go on the cruise to Jamaica for seven days. And if you're interested in going with the church and fellowshipping with us, you can meet somebody after, after services at the information desk, amen, to get more information about that. Also, we want to make you mindful of a few bereavements that we had in our church family. Uh, Brother Cephas Barkley uh, and Brother Cephas Barkley Jr., they buried their sister Carmen on yesterday. Uh, Brother Leslie Simpson, uh, his mother's funeral was yesterday. And Brother Ryan Artline and the, uh, Brother uh, Earl Darby, he was here this morning. Uh, that was his grandson, and they had utilized him on the other day. And then we have a few prayer requests we'll come back with. Uh, doing altar call. Normally we would give the right hand of fellowship with the young
about that name.
let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Is there anybody here you've been redeemed? Is there anybody know who you serve? I've been bought with a praise. Clap of praise. Amen, amen. Well, it's prayer time. Won't you come before the altar, those of you who would like to come? The time of power when we come together corporately. I know you pray in your closet, but this is an opportunity we can come and pray together. So if you would like to come to the altar, won't you come now? As we make our way to the altar, the altar those, there are those who have requested prayer from us. That was a prayer request. Uh, someone asked for my sister Shannon Castile. Her husband passed away. I think that's Gerald Castile. That's from Reverend Mike Feature. So let's keep that family in prayer, please. Also, there are those who are going through bereavement right now. Brother Cephas Barclay Sr.'s a daughter and Brother Cephas Barclay Jr.'s sister, Carmen Barclay, passed. That funeral was he held Saturday. Brother Le Leslie Simpson's mother, Sister Audrey Thompson passed, and that funeral was also held Saturday. Brother R Ryan Arline and Brother and Sister Earl Dabney's grandson, Audrey Arline, that memorial service was held also Sunday. Then we have a group of people who have asked for special prayer, Sister Mel Melissa Strout, Strout, Sister Linda Scott, Sister Jeannie Lee, Sister Margaret Harris, Brother uh, Jesse Celestine, Sister Mabel Garrett, Sister Rebel, Rebel Faye Coleman. Amen. Now, I'm looking on the list. Any of y'all name on here? Anybody else name down here? We ought to say thank you, Lord. Come on now, thank you, Lord. But your name is not on the list. Amen, amen. Because it could be. Amen. So let's pray today like we're praying for ourselves. We're going to have Pastor Carter come in and pray for us today. Amen. Also, let's keep Pastor Mac in prayer that God will get him back in the state safe and sound. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Master and Father, full of grace and understanding, Oh God, we come to you right now, Father, in the humblest way that we know how. Not for any form or fashion, Master, but all to the glory and honor of you. Realizing, Father, that in you we move, live, and have our being. And without you, Father, we can do nothing. Now, God, we ask that you bless us today, Father again according to your love and kindness in your word oh god see for us master when we can't see for ourselves seen and unseen heard and unheard danger oh god we just we love you today oh master we believe in you father we ask that you increase our belief trusting in you master depending on you Oh, God, we are relying on you. Oh, God, move today in this house, Father. We ask that you be with the bereaved family, Father. Master, you've heard the requests, all the prayers that have been requested. Oh, God, move as only you can. Again, Father, we just thank and we praise you and we appreciate you. Oh, God, we ask that you would just bless our country as a whole, Father. Oh God, bless our president, the Senate and the Congress, oh God. Oh God, bless all those that are being leadership positions, Father. Oh God, begin, we can't do nothing without you. And we love you today. Now God, again, we ask that you touch and heal, Father. There are some that needs healing. Some that need reviving. There are those that need restoration, Master. Touch their lives, Father, as only you can. All to the glory and honor of you. 
Oh God, and we thank and we praise you. Oh God, we appreciate you, Master. Now, Father, it is written that you send more labors into your vineyard, oh God. Send more labors, Father, that we must pray. We have not because we ask not. We are asking today, Father. Touch all, Father, that needs touching right now, God. Fall afresh upon this house. Again, we are trusting and believing in you. And we love you. And we thank you. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. How we thank our Lord God once again for giving us another glorious day to be in this house of worship and praise. Amen. Come on, let's give the choir a hand clap of praise. Uh, thank God all the time for what God is doing through our ministry of music and our mu music ministry. And the fact that they have, has once again allowed us to just enjoy the, the beauty of who God is through the singing of song. Let me just state, uh, this morning, we, uh, as, as was stated, we want to continue to lift up our pastor. Again, uh, he is, uh, there's nothing wrong with him other than the fact that he can't get home. And he's been trying to get home ever since, I think, if I'm not mistaken, since Friday. And so many things have happened with the, the, the weather and all of that stuff. And it just causes so many delays and so many changes of flights and things of that nature. So uh, just like you, I, I want my pastor home. And I think next time we're going to make sure that he can drive where he's going to go to vacation. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, first, giving obedience to God, who is uh, the head of my life. I thank God for, once again, for uh, just being so good unto us. Uh, I thank God for uh, the fellowship of the brothers, uh, especially our Reverend uh, Letman, Reverend uh, Sarton, Reverend uh, Ramsey, and, and Brother Hall this week. We had a good time just uh, doing different things. And so I thank God for them. Also, I uh, see my wife uh, this morning. Thank God for her. Uh, I don't know what, ha what has happened with my boys today. I think uh, all of them are separated today. And so I don't know if they got in trouble and the mama told them to separate. And so uh, y'all be praying for the Wilson boys. Because <laughs> I, I, I just hope they did that so that they won't be playing in church. And so I can praise them for having that type of insight. But I think it's another reason. <laughs> Y'all, allow me to, a moment. I'm looking for Joshua. Amen. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and you know how it is if, if, your, if your children are not where they're supposed to be. And I, I know what God has asked me to do today, but I also have a responsibility to my children. And so I'm looking all over the sanctuary, and I see Angie, I see Caleb. And I see Jacob, but I didn't see my, my other son, Joshua, but I see him up in the balcony. Amen. Amen. So all is well. Amen. We can stand up and let's be dismissed. Amen. Amen. Well, well please stand. If you wouldn't mind standing with me, turn into the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 40. The first five verses would be the text that we will use this morning. I know that you may be very familiar with this particular passage of scripture, so just allow me the little latitude to, to share what God has given me, and I pray that what he has given me may be beneficial to you as you continue to seek God's goodness in your life. Psalm 40, verse 1 through 5. It reads, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. 
Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, thoughts which are to us, Lord, they cannot be reckoned upon in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. I would like to use for a thought this morning, oh my God, he did it. Oh my God, he did it. If you have an opportunity during that time of your own personal study, I would like for you to read that whole passage of scripture, verses 1 through 17, if I'm not mistaken. And you will see the, 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 the words, oh my God, several times in that particular passage about what God had done in the life of David. So therefore, I tag this particular uh, subject, this, mor- this uh, text this morning with, oh my God, he did it. Travel back with me just for a few moments, if you wouldn't mind, to J- July the 21st, Friday, July the 21st of 2006. There somewhere in India, there was a situation where this young five-year-old boy by the name of Prince had found himself in a predicament. He found himself, he found himself in a situation where he could not get himself out of. On July the 21st of 2006, on that Friday, as he was playing in India, he fell in a, in a, in a cistern. He fell in a, in a well that was 60 foot deep. And as he fell in a well on that day, uh, uh, there was those around heard a cry coming out of the well of this five-year-old young boy named Prince. And as he was crying out, he was basically simply asking for someone to help get him out of this situation. Uh, all, all the time, that he, as, as he was down in a pit, it said that, that news started getting around the, the community that here's this young boy that was out there playing, doing what he has been accustomed to doing, but he now finds himself in a situation where he could not get himself out of. So therefore, as he was there lying in a pit on Friday, they were, there was those in the community that had got, gathered the, the army of engineers to try to come in and try to rescue this young man. While all of this is going on, it had made national news all over the country. People were saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, how, what has happened to this young boy? Oh my God, how can this young man get out of this situation? Oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, where was the parent at? Oh my God, where was the adult supervision? Oh my God, what has happened to this, this young boy? It is said that during this time on Friday, July 21st of 2006, it is said that as the people gathered, this young fella stayed in the pit, not just Friday night. He stayed in the pit all day Friday. He stayed in the pit all day Saturday. And they said to try to help nourish his body. The only thing that they could give him was some uh, chocolate candy and some milk. And so for two days, he had to, he had to just be uh, 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 supported and sustained by some milk, by some chocolate candy and some milk. And it said that on a parallel, they was digging down parallel to where he was so that they wouldn't uh, uh, cause any disturbance in the earth so that the boy wouldn't be suffocated by all of the soil. So therefore, they dug parallel and they finally reached the young man. And it said they reached him on Sunday. They reached him on Sunday, July the 23rd, 2006. And they said when the young man finally came up, they said the young man was puzzled. And I can imagine that as he came up out of that situation, I can imagine him sitting there looking at everybody and saying, what's the fuss about? Why all, y'all, why, why all the newspaper people are here? Why all the, the cameras are here? Why all the community is out here? But I can, I can begin to imagine that if by chance this man said, oh my God, he did it. This particular passage of scripture this morning is very similar to that young man's situation. That David now finds himself in a predicament. It does not state whether or not uh, David's enemies has put him in this situation. So therefore, I would like to think that because David has had some prior situations in his life, that it had caused him to move into what I would call the, a state of depression, a, a depressed pit. That, that because of the situation in his life, because of the fact that he could not regulate his own family, he could not uh, 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 do the things that he was needed and necessary to do in his own family, that maybe that might have been the reason why he had fallen into this mind of uh, a state of depression. Maybe it might have been the fact that because he was now king and he could not even run his kingdom the way he wanted to run his kingdom because there were those out there was trying to get his kingdom from him. So therefore, maybe he was depressed about that. Maybe he might have been depressed about the fact that, man, you know what, that was one day I was sitting on my balcony, minding my own business, doing my own thing, and my eyes got the best of me. And so sin took a hold of his life. And so therefore, maybe because of that situation, it caused David to find himself right in this particular psalm. 
but no matter what caused him to write the psalm, I think it's instructive for all of us to understand we too may find ourselves in a situation where we cannot get ourselves out of. There are times when we find ourselves in situations where, where we think that we're all by ourselves. Nobody can reach down far enough. Nobody can reach down long enough to try to get us out of our situation. And so therefore, we're stuck. And the only thing we are left to do is to cry out. This morning, David, David reminds us that it's okay to cry if you know who you're crying to. The word of God says in verse 1 that David said that he patiently, he patiently waited upon the Lord. That when we are in our pits of life, we cannot rush the process because sometimes God will allow us to get into some pits. God will allow us to have some troubled times in our lives so that we can begin to learn to trust the Lord. That the word of God says that in verse 1 that he waited patiently for the Lord and the Lord inclined his ear to him. That means that while we are in our pits of life, we need to stay prayed up. We need to stay mindful of the fact that if we are not praying, then those things that the Lord has allowed to happen in our experience will last longer than they need to last. But here's David, the psalmist is saying that, listen, I waited patience for the Lord, and as I was waiting on the Lord, I was praying. That's good news for somebody this morning because instead of you waiting on the Lord, you're, you're talking to everybody else except the Lord. And this morning, I'm trying to remind you that when you are in your pit, the Lord will incline his ear to you if you begin to pray. No, don't call big mama, don't call big daddy, don't call little mama, little daddy. Call on the Lord. Because the word of the Lord said that, listen, not only can he incline his ear to us, but he can answer us and he can do something about our situations. This morning, David is trying to help us that sometimes when we're in our pits, we don't want to pray. Because our pit gets the best of us. We get so confounded by our pit that we start looking at our pit as though our pit is something that we cannot control. But again, if the Lord, if the Lord allowed the pit to be, then the Lord might be working on something. The Lord might be trying to teach us a lesson in the midst of the pit. So therefore, as you're waiting to try to get, uh, try to get out of your pit, my recommendation to you right now is begin to start praying. The word of God says that if we earnestly seek the Lord's face, that he will hear us. And I thank God this morning that every now and then when I'm in my pit, I'm not going to throw a pity party, but rather I want to begin to pray. That when I call on, on the name of the Lord, that there's something about his name that causes things to happen. It might not happen when I ask him to right at that moment, but if I just hang on in there with the Lord, sooner or later the Lord will deliver Sooner or later, the Lord will pick me up. Sooner or later, the Lord will dust me off. Sooner or later, the Lord will put me on something solid. So therefore, instead of crying, instead of tripping, instead of calling different folk, no, I call out on the Lord. And while I'm calling, I'm waiting as well. I told you last, the last time I preached that I don't, like, I don't like waiting because every now and then when I wait, I get impatient. But when you call out on the Lord, the Lord help you with your patience. Because again, the Lord does not work on our timetable. He has his own timetable. Grandmama said it this way, he may not come when I want him. But he's always, he's always on time. So that tells me whenever he shows up, that was the right time. But here it is, that while I'm in my pit though, what am I going to do? How do I handle my pits? How do I respond to the pits of life? Well, David helps us as well. There, starting in verse 2, he said, he brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet up on a rock and established my going. There are times when we want to define, we, we allow our pits to, de to define who we are and what we can become. Some people around us, when they see us in our pit, they begin, instead of trying to devise a plan to get us out of the pit, they will come along and start throwing dirt. 
they start saying things like, they ain't going to never get out. Ain't nothing good going to ever happen to them. So therefore, instead of them helping, they, they start to define us by the pit that we are in. David here, even though he describes the pit by saying it is a horrible pit, but notice what else he says about the pit. He allows the pit to be a testimony about what the Lord is able to do. Look at what the text says. He said, he brought me up also out of the pit. I like the fact that when we are in our situations, God, God, God does not mind getting into our situations with us. So therefore, when we're in our situation uh, and, and when we're in our pits, our pits can help us form a testimony about not the pit, but about the one who was able to get us out of the pit. Because the word of God said that he brought me up uh, also out of the pit. That means he did not leave me there. I like that because every now and then, the people that are around us, when we are in our pits, they feel like, I, right, I don't want to get in there with us, with you, so therefore I leave you to handle your pit by yourself. But thanks be unto God, God is willing to get in our pit with us so that when he get, up, get in there with us, he, ain't, he is able to bring us up out of, and here it is, to establish us on some solid. Some of us don't understand just how good God has really and truly been to you. Because you think that you got yourself up out of your pit. Let me help you right quick. You might have gotten yourself up out of it because it was not really a pit. You see, if we're not careful, we will allow ourselves to think that we are clever enough that we are strong enough and that we have enough wealth to get us up out of all of our situations. When you're able to do that, that's not a pit. That's just something that you might be just going through. But when you're in a pit and you can't see your way out of, you tried to get your way out of it and the more you tried to muddy it got, it got you in a pit. The word of God says that he was not in, only in a horrible pit, but he was in a pit with miry clay. That means that the more he began to move, the more muddy it got. And the word of God says that, that as he continued to try to struggle and strain, that he kept on getting sink, sinking deeper and deeper into his situation. And I think that's helpful because some of us, when we are in our pits, we try to work our own way out of it, and we only find ourselves digging deeper and deeper in the midst of our situation. But let me help you. If you serve a God like we serve, if you'll start crying out and calling out on his name, that sooner or later he would say, hold up, hold up. I got you. I got you, and let me get you up out of this. And as he begins to pick him up, I begin to think about what, what might be going on, not only in that, the young boy's mind called Prince, but what might have been going on in David's mind as God began to transform the situation? The word of God says that in verse 3. That, that, that latter part he says that, that, that many shall see it, fear, and shall trust in the Lord. My pit, your benefit. David says that because I'm in a pit, my pit, depending on how I utilize my pit, depending on how I can use the pit and get the maximum potential out of the pit, my pit could be your benefit. I looked at that and I said, man, God, you're so awesome. That, that while I'm in my pit, if I handle my pit according to your word, your will, and your way, those that may have been throwing dirt in my pit are those that might have been looking and standing around saying, look at him, how he got into his pit. Those same individuals, they got to take note of not only how I got into the pit, but also they got to take note of how I got out of the pit.
Many times people don't see how you got in. But I do know there's a whole lot of people are trying to watch to see how you got out. And if you're like me this morning, if you know it was nobody but the Lord who got you out, some people are going to see it. Some people are going to begin to fear. But some people are going to begin to trust in the Lord. So that means that my pit could be to your benefit. And so therefore, let me help all of us this morning. Don't allow your pit to define who you are. Use your pit this morning. Use your situation this morning. Use your circumstance this morning. Use your downtime this morning to be an instrument of grace in God's hand. Use your situation to be a testimony about what God can do. And then, not only what he can do for you, but he can do it for somebody else. Because again, let me just help you real quick. The word of God clearly tells us that, listen, be careful unless you fall too. Because again, some of us might be in a pit today. Others might be in a pit tomorrow. But if you got out of the pit by the grace of God, then listen, listen, let me show you how you're going to help somebody. Baby, it's going to be all right. I know where you are right now. But because the God I serve, he has no respect to person. If he got me up, he could get you up too. So therefore, that gives all of us strength and understanding that, listen, yes, my pit could be your benefit if we do it by the grace of God. No, no, don't get out of your pit and start talking about all the stuff that you did because you didn't do it. The word of God said that David tried and he couldn't get himself out of. And so, oh my God, the Lord did it for David. There is David sitting there in a pit and as he's coming out, out of, up out of the pit, I can imagine when he got out of his situation, all those around him, his children, his his, his enemies, his, his, his cabinet people, his, his palace people, his, his guards, all of them are watching to try to find out, man, how in the world our king is going to handle his situation. And so be mindful that as you are in your, your predicament, your pits, somebody is watching you. Somebody is trying to see about your God in you. And as they are watching you, I pray that as they are watching you, they will begin to trust in the Lord just like you trusted in the Lord. They will begin to have the same testimony that, listen, Reverend Wilson got out because of the Lord. I can get out also because of the Lord. But that's only going to happen if you handle your pits according to the word of God. No, you can't try to do it yourself. You got to ask the Lord. But not only that, that, that blew my mind about, about how my, the pit could be your benefit, but, but notice carefully at the start of verse 3. He said that he would give us what? He put a new song in my mouth and even praise unto our God. Now, now I, I tried, I tried, Brother Phil, y'all, I tried, Brother Phil, y'all, to try to make sure that I'm trying to divide this thing correctly because uh, it did not say that he was praising the Lord while he was in the pit. It did not say that because the word of God says that after he established his feet, he said he put a song in his mouth. And so, so there are some praises that need to happen right now. That as soon as the Lord gets you out of and establish your goings again, that needs to be a praise break right then. Soon, soon as it happened, don't, 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 don't miss that. Don't miss that because, again, some people are struggling right now in the midst of their situations because you did not celebrate the goodness of the Lord when you got out of your situation. You, you delayed it in some way because of the fact that you said, oh, it, 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 it don't take all that or oh, oh, nobody else is around me, so I, don't, I just keep it to myself. But no, I can't keep it to myself because, again, the same people that watch me go in need the same people, to, the same people need to hear my testimony. The same people need to hear my praise. The same people need to hear my song about what the Lord has done and delivered me from. But also when I looked at that, I said, you know, it's amazing how David does things. David didn't just praise the Lord right then, but because of David's predicament, because David's pit, David started thinking about all the good things that the Lord had done in his life. Look at verse 5, and I'm about almost out of here. Look at verse 5, it said that, listen, too numerous. And so he had, he had a present praise about what the Lord did for him right then. But then he had a past praise about what the Lord has already done. Is there anybody in here this morning that the Lord has already done more than enough? 
Is there anybody in here this morning that can testify that the Lord, you don't have to do anything else for me to give you praise, glory, and honor? Is there anybody in here this morning that understands that it was the Lord that brought you out, brought you over, brought you around, brought you under, and since you're here today, you have a lot of other stuff that you need to praise the Lord about? Well, listen, listen, if you, if you, don't, have, if you don't have any other reason to praise the Lord about something, well, let me help you with a couple of things. Let me share some things with you. That was another boy. That was another boy named Prince that fell one day. But he didn't fall because he wanted to. He fell because the father asked him to. We call his name Prince too. He's a prince of peace. And see, when he fell, he fell. He didn't fall because he was in trouble. He fell because we were in trouble. And so therefore, when he, when he got to where I was, and he began to pick me up, and he began to dust me off, and he began to put my feet back on solid ground, and he began to put a new word in my mouth, I couldn't help but start thinking about all the stuff. I couldn't help but start thinking about all the stuff that the Lord has done for me. The word of God in verse 5, let me help you, let me help you, he says, they cannot, the latter part, they cannot be reckoned upon in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are, they are more than can be numbered. Let me give you a good place to start numbering the goodness of the Lord. Let me, let me start you off with, 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 with where you should begin if you can't find any other reasons to praise the Lord. First thing, number one, the word of God says he was born. Y'all didn't get happy about that one. As I was studying, I said, you know what? They, 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 they not going to get happy about that because he was born. But, but if he wasn't born, then Friday wouldn't have came. So since he was born, I get happy about the fact that, thank the Lord, that he was born. I, I started to move a little bit further. I said, not only was he, was he born, but he was bruised. He, he was wounded. For me. I, I started getting a little bit more excited about the three. As I was studying, I said, oh my God, oh my God. I can imagine David, David didn't have the luxury of knowing what happened in the future. But I, I, I do. And so since I got happy about the fact that he was born and he was wounded. Then I got excited about the fact that he went to court one day. And it said that Pilate, Pilate found no fault, so he had to wash his hands. I got excited about that because he didn't have any spot, blemish, or wrinkle upon him. So that means that God was ready to accept the sacrifice that he was going to give on Friday. And I started getting more excited about the goodness of the Lord. I started looking at the fact that, man, if, if God did all of that, he, he allowed him to live, and he came, and he was wounded, and Pilate couldn't find no fault. I, I sure got excited about Friday then. I got excited about Friday because if he didn't go to Friday, then the preachers would have to get out of their they, 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 they lingo or their poetry or their poem or their song early Sunday morning. We got to get that out. But because he was willing to come down here, live for 33 plus years, and as he did so, he was willing to die on that cross for you and I. I thank the Lord that he did that for me. I don't know if you get excited about what the Lord is doing. I don't know if you get excited about what the Lord has done for you. But let me help you out with this. If the Lord delivered you from something, he did it. You didn't. If the Lord healed your body, he did it. 
You didn't. If the Lord made you whole and the Lord brought your family back and the Lord gave you a roof over your head and the Lord put food on your table and the Lord gave you a mode of transportation, he did all of that. And I can imagine David in this particular psalm as he started talking about, let me start counting how good the Lord has been. God has been too good to us not to tell him thank you. The Lord has been too good to us not to tell him thank you. The Lord has been better to us that we've been to our own selves, not to tell him thank you. The Lord has blessed me beyond measure, not to tell him thank you. Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord, I get a praise in my spirit because I know where I used to be. I know where I am now, but this is why I got so excited about where I'm going, that he is sitting high. He's looking down low. So every time I get into my pit, I don't have to worry about if he sees me or not. I just need to call out on that name. So when I call out on the name of Jesus, something happens. When I call out on the name of Jesus, I might have to stay in a pit a long time. But as long as I call out on that name, it is well with my soul. I might have to stay in there all day Friday. I might have to stay in there all day Saturday. But sooner or later, the word of God says the Lord will come see about me. And when he does, I ain't going to wait till tomorrow to tell him thank you. I ain't going to wait till next year to tell him thank you. I'm going to start right there and right there because you don't know just how good the Lord has been. You don't know just how much he has done for me. And I'm not the only one in here this morning. Some of you are sitting down here this morning and you know for a fact God has done marvelous things in your life too many for you to start counting so don't start counting just keep on praising praising when you don't feel like it praising when everybody else is around you praising when you're by yourself praising when you go into the pit praising when you get out of the pit praising when you're walking down the street praising when you're holding your books in your hand praising when you're writing your check out praising at the bank Praise him at the store. Praise him at the park. But most importantly, you praise him right in your pits. Let everybody see that the Lord is not just a sometime God. That if you get into a pit again tomorrow, he is still able to pick us up, put us back where we need to be, and put a new praise in our tongue. I thank the Lord this morning that I had to use a last year praise about what the Lord is doing for me right now. He woke me up. He woke me up. I had a bad ankle on Friday, and now I'm walking good on Sunday. Thank God for his healing power. Thank God for his delivering power. Glory be to our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you want to know who's going to do it for you, God can do it. If you are a witness that God can do it, why don't you stand up and testify that the Lord did it? Mama couldn't do it. Daddy couldn't do it. Pastor Matt couldn't do it. My money couldn't do it. It was nobody but the Lord. And if the Lord did it, my brother might have said, if the redeemer of the Lord, let him say so. If the Lord did it, say so. If the Lord picked you up, say so. If the Lord dusted you off, say so. If the Lord gave you the house, say so. If the Lord gave you the children, say so. If the Lord gave you the pink slip, say so. But if the Lord gave you a new job, say so. Amen. Amen. God is so good. He's been better to me. He's been gooder than gooder. He's been better than better. He's been sweeter than sweeter. That's how good he's been. I don't mind you looking at my pity. I don't mind you looking at my pit. But I sure don't mind you looking at my praise. The Lord did it. The Lord did it. The Lord did it. When no one else could help. The Lord did it. When I was out there by myself. The Lord did it. When I was strung out there, the Lord did it. When I have no money, 
The Lord did it. Glory be to our Lord. Amen.